It is 5.50 and I've got my station already set. Um, I started about 5.30 and because I'm filming this, it took me a little bit longer than usual to get all my vegetables ready for me to prepare them. The first thing I'm gonna show you because it's really easy and it's hard to explain how easy it is, so I will show you how easy it is to make rice in my rice cooker. So I've had to deal with heavy metals and now there's a lot out about how much heavy metals is bringing pulled in through the soil into the rice that we eat. Um, after some research, the best guess, the best information I can find is that instant rice and basmati rice it's kind of the best combination for the lowest amount of heavy metals. So that's what I use until more data comes out. I'm just going to go with that. It makes me feel more comfortable. I don't want to be pulling more heavy metals into my system. I'm doing a lot to try to get them out. So basmati, instant rice, um, and my rice cooker. At the very beginning, before I even get started with my anything else, I'm going to put in for my family, which is like I said, um, six to 11 people any night. So tonight is gonna be six people, but they're gonna want rice tomorrow and the next day, etc. So I make a lot of rice and I can easily. So I put in three cups of rice and rice is always one to two ratio, one rice to two, one cup rice, two cups water. So there's one. Two, three, and then I already, since my sink is not here near the camera, um, I already measured out six cups of water. That is literally it. I don't put any seasoning, I don't put any fats, anything, because our diets vary. My brother doesn't really like extra fat, and I like tons of extra fat. We're on different camps. Um, sometimes I like a lot of salt, sometimes I don't like very much. So I just make the rice and everybody else does what they want to the rice. So now I select mode, white rice, and I hit start. And actually because this is instant rice, this actually only takes about 20 minutes in this cooker. Um, so I try to keep my eye on it. If I can remember around 20 minutes, I check on it, it's done, and I stop it. And then it keeps it warm for me. Uh, if I don't remember, it just keeps cooking and the rice is a little bit dry, but it's still really good rice. Nobody complains. Um, I try to be good, but if I've got a lot going on, sometimes it just cooks a little bit too long. That is all. That is all I need to do to have rice added to my meal. So next I'm going to show you my vegetables. I'm going to make baked cauliflower, sauteed green beans, and then I'm going to make cod and a mango salsa to go on top of it might sound really fancy, but in fact it's just a bunch of chopping, which if you watch the first video, you can see how easy it is to just chop everything really quickly. And then other than that, it's just really delicious. So everybody loves it. It's really nutritious, lots and lots of vegetables that go into it. Um, and it's one of my favorites. <laughs> All right, next time you see me, this will all be ready. Okay, so. Phase one was putting the rice in the rice cooker, and that's done by now. It's just keeping it warm and putting out all of my vegetables freshly washed and ready for me to cut them up. I've got a bowl for compost. Anything that doesn't go as a vegetable goes into the trash or into the compost goes into that bowl, and then everything else goes into their own individual bowl. So I've got cucumbers chopped up now. Phase two, phase one was making the rice, setting up the rice to make, and um, and setting up the vegetables to get ready. Phase two was sitting down and actually chopping all of those with the Vidalia chopper, as you see in my first video. So I used this very small grid, and for a salsa, I like that a lot. So I've got very, very finely chopped um, vegetables, and that will make an excellent salsa. I hated this dish. I hated making it before the Vidalia chopper, and it still is one of the longest ones um, to make because it takes a lot of pre-chopping, but I'm making it for six adults plus leftovers, where hopefully you're not cooking for that many people all that frequently. Um, if you have a big bunch of company coming over, I don't necessarily highly recommend this dish unless you wanna spend the time chopping. So phase three now is going to be putting all of this on the tray, ready to be in the oven, and mixing the salsas, etc., getting everything cooking. So 
I actually did all of this without the video rolling because I thought the video was rolling. So I'm doing it all over again. I took all of the cauliflower from in here. I put in olive oil in a Ziploc bag. And then I put the cauliflower in about this much in the Ziploc bag. And I just mashed it together so that the olive oil gets all over the cauliflower. And then I dumped all the cauliflower batch by batch onto this tray. And then I used my steak seasoning, which is just what I call it. It's because I was so inspired. I really like the Montreal steak seasoning, but I'm not sure that it doesn't have MSG and other things that can bother us. So I make some myself and I use the old container, but it's salt, pepper, um, garlic, um, onion, and uh, like Italian spices. Sometimes I just cheat and use an Italian spice mix, which I know every single ingredient is just a spice. So I sprinkled that all over the cauliflower. So I just took my chopped up cauliflower, put it in a Ziploc bag with olive oil, mixed it around, laid it on the tray, sprinkled this on, and now this guy is ready to go in the oven and we'll have baked cauliflower. I'm gonna put him in first because cauliflower does take a long time to bake. So the next thing I did, also for you on video, which was apparently not recording, was I took my cod and I put it down piece by piece and then I put seasoning on it. So this is an entire bag from Costco, $15 for six pieces of cod and it's delicious. So it's a good deal for us. So I'm gonna go put these in the oven and then I'll be back to show you how to do the salsa. Okay, one last thing before I do the salsa for you is the green beans. I'm also gonna make green beans. We bought a whole case of them. We're gonna be eating green beans like every night for a while. So I'm gonna take my wok, put in a big glob of coconut oil, put that on the stove and heat up the wok in the coconut oil, throw in my green beans and then probably add the same seasoning. It's really good. So to recap, we put the rice in the rice maker and then we set up our vegetables. And I sat down and I chopped up the vegetables and once everything was out and ready for me to use it, I put everything into cooking mode. So I put the cauliflower on a tray, I put the fish on a tray, and I put the green beans in the wok. I put all of those in, the green beans are on the stove, the fish and the cauliflower are in the oven. So now, while that stuff is cooking, I've got all of these laid out in front of me. Um, I think that if you were doing this just normally for normal people, you would just throw it all in one big bowl and it would just be super happy and easy. But it's not that way here. We all have very different dietary needs and dietary restrictions. My brother can't have um, anything that might excite his immune system. Um, I have no immune system. He has a completely overexcited immune system. So he can't have peppers, he can't have tomatoes. So he gets the celery, the cucumber, and the mango. So I've made his salsa here. Um, now, Aiden's, he can't have any carbs and fruit. So he gets celery, the cucumber, and the peppers. And then everybody else gets the combination of everything that's left over. So for Aiden, I think I will use the orange bowl. I'm gonna put celery in here. And then what's left is for Aiden. I'm gonna put some cucumber in here for him. And then what's left is the rest for the rest of us. Put a little bit more for him. He cannot have the mango, so all of that goes for us. I'm gonna need a bigger bowl. We're gonna use this one. So it's all gonna go in here. And he can have peppers, so he gets peppers, and the rest go to us. And we are the only ones who get tomatoes, so he doesn't get any. I'm going to strain this a little bit. Okay, tomatoes go in here. So I can stir this up. Also, for everyone um, is cilantro. So this is the Vidalia Chop Wizard. If you haven't seen my first video, the long 20 minute one, I show you how I use this to chop up virtually everything. I didn't show you how to chop up mango or cucumber. I can do that if people ask for that. 
Um, but one thing that's really cool is that you can just take a amounts of cilantro, put it here in the middle, and it will chop up your herbs for you as well. So all of my cilantro is perfectly diced, tiny little pieces. And I can just go ahead and put that into everybody's salsa. Cilantro makes everything wonderful, especially fresh, raw salsa kind of things. Just fantastic. So tons of salsa for this big bowl. And there are four of us eating out of this, one person eating out of that, and one person eating out of that. So that's why it's a little disproportionate. And then I'm going to add lime, but only to Garrett's and mine, not to Aiden's. So this goes in here, and this will crush and invert it. Might need to stand up for this. And then I think we'll do another one, other half to this one, and add some to Garrett's as well. So my brother has his hypoallergenic salsa, Aiden has his low sugar salsa, and the rest of us have all of the good stuff. And there you go. So now I just stir this up, and when we present dinner and the cod, um, this can go right on top and be eaten along with the salty cod and the sweet salsa. And I'll show you when it's all on a plate. It's going to look pretty awesome. I've done all the cooking and everything is ready. So now I get to lay it all out in a nice, pretty arrangement. Um, I really like to take pride in what I do. I like it to be beautiful and I like it to be delicious and I like to show it off. So. I went to Walmart and I bought myself a white plate because I wasn't a fan of the decorative plates and changing the way that my food looked. So I got myself a really nice, really cheap white plate from Walmart. So I get to put a little bit of everything on my nice decorative plate, put on some rice. I'm going to do cod. Um, I did not include this in the video, but I made... Um, mushrooms, just sauteed some in a pan, just coconut oil, mushrooms, and a little bit of seasoning so that there was something savory and salty for my vegan brother and Andy, who's a vegan, to eat the sweet salsa over something salty, just like we're going to do with the cod. So I've got my cod and my rice and my beautiful salsa on top, and then green beans. And some cauliflower. And before I sit down and enjoy myself, I always go up to the table, make a nice backdrop, and I take a beautiful picture of my beautiful food because I love it and it makes me happy. And that's what life is all about. So I. Uh, I took over two hours to make dinner tonight. It doesn't usually take me that long. I learned to cook for myself, and then I learned to cook for myself and Aiden, and then I learned to cook for a family of six, and then sometimes 11, and I figured out how to make that work and be a little bit easier, but I have not mastered the art of cooking for six very hungry people, very hungry adults, and make a video at the same time very efficiently. So between tripods breaking and all of that, it's, a, it's been a very interesting first run, but I definitely think that tomorrow night's video is going to go a little bit smoother for me. And I really hope that I can give you guys a lot of information and inspire you to cook and make beautiful things and not make it feel overwhelming. So I hope you guys have a good night and everybody's eating something delicious and healthy tonight or soon. Good night.